Now let's have a look at the grammar rules that define the grammar of our language. The root rule is called script and a script contains um, an optional character definition statement followed by an optional condition definition statement followed by an arbitrary amount of scenes. The character definition statement and the condition definition statement are quite similar, so I will only explain one. Um, the character definition statement starts with the keyword characters, followed by a colon, and then we use this pattern to define a comma-separated list of elements, in this case of characters. So we want to make sure that after the colon there's at least one character defined and then there might follow a list of other characters which is separated by commas. So a character um, is just an identifier and the same goes for the condition definition statement. A scene has an header followed by a dialog rule and the end scene keywords. The header starts with a scene keyword followed by a scene description. Scene description is a terminal rule and it basically can be seen as starting with a minus symbol and then followed by an arbitrary amount of tokens or characters but without a new line or a carriage return. So after the minus symbol um, this rule specifies that everything is consumed uh, as long it is as long as it is no carriage return token or a new line. So this basically means that our scene description is only allowed as a single line in, in a script. Let's have a look at the dialogue rule. The dialogue rule comprises the different kinds of dialogue um, we know from our language. So the defaults, an optional first time rule, a arbitrary list of conditionals, an optional first uh, other times rule and an optional parting lines rule. The defaults rule just specifies a arbitrary list of dialog lines so this means that that uh, the defaults might also be empty. The first time other times and parting lines rules are also very similar to each other um, they start with the specific keywords followed by an optional comment and then they contain a conditional body rule which I will refer to in a second and they all uh, all end with the end keyword so these three rules are quite similar the conditional rule is a bit more complicated start with the conditional keyword and inside these parentheses we refer to the condition list rule which represents our simple boolean logic. The condition list again makes use of this pattern we learned earlier in the character definition statement so there's at least one condition necessary and after that um, there might be a list of other conditions which are concatenated by the end keyword. A condition starts optionally with the NOT operator which allows us to specify negated conditions and then we want to refer to a condition which has been defined before and a next text that can be done with these square brackets where we tell um, that in this case or in this uh, position in our language 
there should be a reference to a condition definition. And by default, um, the parser that is created by Xtext tries to consume an identifier here, so we don't have to uh, give additional information, just refer to a condition definition, and the parser tries to consume an identifier which um, represents a condition definition. So with these two rules, what we um, define is our Boolean logic, for our conditional statements and inside the conditional statement we again use this conditional body. And now the conditional body rule um, it contains a list of statements followed by an optional set conditions rule. A statement is either a dialog line or another conditional. And this is where we use recursion to allow um, our language to have nested conditionals. So inside our conditional rule we refer to a conditional body and the conditional body contains statements which can again be conditionals. So we refer here to the conditional rule and with this recursion um, it is possible in our language to define nested conditional statements. The conditional body also has the set conditions rule which allows us at the end of a conditional body to actually set different conditions and we again make use of this pattern to define a comma separated list of condition definition references. So we refer to again condition definition and the parser tries to consume identifiers here. Okay, so the otherwise part of a condition is very similar to the condition itself. It starts with the otherwise keyword and then optionally it might have also a condition statement here, a boolean expression. So in this case it is optional since we want to have the ability to state an otherwise uh, default behavior in the end. And then again we have this conditional body which allows us to do this nested condition logic. The dialog line itself starts by referring to a character followed by a column and then we use the string rule from the terminal's grammar to actually define our uh, dialog line. Last but not least we have this comment rule. We define our own terminal rule for comments and our comments are defined by um, anything you want between square brackets. So this arrow indicates that we can write basically anything we want until we reach a um, right square bracket. So this is the grammar definition file for our dialog scripting language. I hope you enjoyed the screencasts and the article. Thanks. Bye.